This is the MSI Z370 Gaming Pro Carbon. It's a rather nice sort of mid-tier Z370 motherboard and we're going to be taking a look at it in the video so do stick around. So naturally a tour of the board itself. Now of course it is a fairly standard layout. It is an ATX motherboard with four random slots. The socket 1151 for the specifically 8th generation CPUs. That's the, the Coffee Lake ones. The 8700K, 8600K, 8400 and all that sort of stuff. So if you're after you know something for a 7700K KB Lake chip this isn't the board for you, it's not backwards compatible. Now as I mentioned in my ASUS motherboard launch review, these boards are pretty similar to their Z270 counterparts, so you're not going to see any, any extra ports or many extra you know, major features uh, comparing the two. The only real major feature is that you can now use 6 core chips on this sort of desktop lineup, so I suppose that's kind of the, the, the new feature upgrade, but um, I would also mention that uh, just like the ASUS boards and pretty much any other, in fact all other Z370 motherboards, the NVMe SSD SSD or the M.2 slots are all rooted through the chipset, which means that you're going to be bottlenecking the NVMe SSD speeds, even if you're just using one because the chipset connects uh, pretty much everything on the board from your gigabit ethernet on the back to your SATA ports and pr pretty much everything in between all gets connected through the chipset and then to the CPU. So just to bear in mind that uh, NVMe, S NVMe SSDs will be a little bit bottlenecked and of course if you want to use two, because there are two M.2 SSD slots on here, uh, you will also be bottlenecked bottlenecking on that front too. Just a quick look over the rest of the PCIe lineup. You do have two reinforced X16 slots. You also have three uh, 1X slots, so these are not open back, so you can't use an X4 card in an X1 slot or anything like that. And you do have an X, uh, X8 X connected uh, rear non-reinforced slot uh, down at the bottom as well. Taking a look on the bottom of the board, it is littered with connections. Overall, you have uh, two RG, in fact, actually three RGB headers, one of which is an addressable header, has the data pin and five volts and ground as opposed to the standard 12 volts and then R, G and B for common uh, anode connections um, but otherwise you have uh, as I said HD audio, you actually have two upright SATA ports on here too you have two USB uh, 2.0 front panel uh, connectors and just uh, a TPM connector and your front panel you know standard IO but otherwise it's kind of crazy in there. What's also crazy is how many RGB headers there are on this board total. There's actually five if you include the built-in Corsair link one which is kind of crazy and means that you can actually control the Corsair link RGB LEDs from the board and sync it all up which again is pretty nice especially if you have something like the lighting node pro or the new LL fans which actually come with a lighting node pro as well so pretty awesome setup. On the top of the board you do have the 8 pin CPU power connector as well as another RGB connector and otherwise that is all the power you need for the board besides these 24 pin. You do also have two USB 3.0 head front panel headers none of the new sort of type C enabled uh, USB 3.1 connectors here uh, just the standard 3.0 and you do also have four more SATA ports under the second USB 3 ports. Also since a lot of people ask you actually have six four pin PWM fan headers on the board which is very nice for a lot of connectivity. Taking a look at the rear IO you do have a pretty comprehensive setup so full 7.1 audio and gigabit ethernet you also have four USB 3. Point, I believe 3.1 gen 1 ports as well as uh, USB type C. You also have uh, two USB 2 ports, a PS2 combo port, and a couple of display outputs too. Once you get the board installed in a system, it is a little bit more minimalist in terms of its lighting compared to some of the other more flashy boards that have a lot of LEDs built in, so if you like a more subtle design, this one is pretty nice. I'd also mention that the BIOS is the standard MSI BIOS, which is really nice. It's still kind of my favorite overall for the you know motherboard BIOSes around. It's probably the easiest to use. It's also very easy to overclock on, and specifically with this board, the multi-core enhancements that you've seen from some of the other boards including ASUS those are not enabled by default here these are you know off by standard so if you do pick up one of these boards it's not going to be running your 8700k at 4.7 gigahertz all cores and running it at 94 degrees celsius and also when overclocking on the board I didn't have any issues I know that some uh, other boards have uh, seen vdroop issues and stuff like that that's not something that I've observed here although I didn't manage to push the chip all that far just mostly due to thermals for the chip itself so I think that's probably going to be the limit for a lot of people. So what are my thoughts on this? Well, if you're planning on picking up an 8700K like that one, or if you're planning on picking up basically any of the 8th generation chips, this is a really nice board to pick. It has a fantastic BIOS, it has a decent job at overclocking, it's got some nice connectivity overall, and you know, decent styling, I mean it's not, you know, the, the flashiest in the world, but at the same time, as said, it is just a, a little bit more understated, and I kind of like that. 
When it comes to the actual you know, platform itself, as I, as I mentioned in the launch review, it is a little bit annoying that stuff like NVMe SSDs are all routed through the chipset, which means that you're gonna be bottlenecking through that DMI uh, X4 connection. But otherwise, uh, also if you're planning on picking up as the eighth generation chips, you have to pick up a Z370 board. You can't go with the older generation and the fact that the boards are almost identical in, in most of the ways, but the fact that obviously they're now higher priced and only support those chips is a little bit of annoyance, mostly on Intel side rather than the motherboard vendors. When it comes to scoring for me, this is gonna be a 4.5 for value for money. In terms of performance, I'm gonna go with a five, and in terms of functionality, I think I'm gonna go with a 4.5. Styling is a little bit more subtle, and I think I'm gonna go with a 4.5 as well, and a 4.5 for Tetsu Maybe score, and I think a gold award. It is a very nice motherboard. As I said, it sits at a decent price point. It's not too high, not too low, um, and has a, a lot of decent features, good connectivity, doesn't have MCE on by default, so, I'm pretty happy with it and obviously a very nice bias to go with it. If you have any questions about the board, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. I do reply as and when possible. And if you have any, you know, technical questions, feel free to either hit me up on Twitter or hit MSI up because they're probably the ones that can help you more. If you're interested in picking up this board too, take a look at the price when and where you watch this in the links in the description down below. And there'll also be other links down there for Amazon and Overclockers UK and a few other bits and pieces down there too for uh, other ways that you can support me. Obviously, I make these videos on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday basis. This is my full-time job, so actually testing stuff like this and testing, you know, the 8700K for, you know, multi-core enhancements on and off and all that sort of stuff it does take a lot of time and means that, uh, you know, I have to pay the rent somehow. So if you could use those links when you're shopping on Amazon or Over Overclockers UK or anything like that, that would be fantastic. It really does help me out. Otherwise, if you're new to the video, this is the first uh, Tech Team GB video you've watched, feel free to take a look at the uh, subscribe button down there too and obviously the, the bell notification if you want to be reminded of when my videos are up. I also do live streams on Thursday days there will be some other videos over here for you and yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you in peace thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it we'll see you all in the next video